All right, so this is it. Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, March 27th, 2023, The Burn Channel on Rumble, The Burn Channel on Rumble. If you want, uh, in case I get censored again on YouTube, uh, let's see, the Azom plant has fallen in Bakhmut. That was a huge, huge industrial facility. Uh, it's uh, that, that is going to be a big loss to the Ukrainians. Uh, I think there's only a couple more defensive positions in Bakhmut uh, that uh, are really strategic. And then I just don't see how they're going to manage to survive there. But we'll see what's going on. Let's get to the first video here on Russia Ukraine updates. I always give credit to their channel. You can watch them on Rumble. I just kind of go through and just try to, to disseminate them to uh, to uh, put it into a video and tie them all together because some of these they're irrelevant. They're in foreign languages, and I'm just like, well, okay. I I just gotta like thread through this so let's watch the first one just the first part it's three minutes and 37 seconds i'm not going to play the whole thing y ha ocultado los verdaderos, las verdaderas causas del conflicto y ha puesto a Rusia en el papel del culpable. Yo realmente creo que el culpable de este conflicto es el propio Estados Unidos, el gobierno de Estados Unidos. Y esto tiene que ver mucho con, con lo que sabemos en la historia de cómo actúa el imperio de Angie. Estados Unidos cuando tiene situaciones de crisis como la que está sufriendo actualmente, acude a la guerra para resolver los problemas de crisis. Y ahí pone por delante los intereses del complejo militar industrial, necesita guerras para vender armas, y vendiendo armas, solucionar los problemas de crisis interna que pueda tener. All right, that's enough of that. I kind of agree with all of that. So let's get to the next video. This is, a, this is an interesting one, but let's get through another piece of the news. Uh, Janet Yellen says she is going to spank China. That uh, we are going to uh, put sanctions on them. Uh, I don't even, I haven't heard the word tariff. I, it seems kind of weird, uh, although Trump had tariffs on uh, China. And, uh, and she says, you know, if they want to support Russia, which uh, guess what, uh, you know, I guess... Russia is going to be buying uh, goods from uh, China in Yuan, and uh, China is going to be in buying Russian commodities in Yuan. So, uh, I, wh what are these sanctions going to do? <laughs> I mean, you tell me. You tell me in the comments below. I don't. I don't see where you know the U.S. dollar or sanctions are going to do anything about trade between uh, Russia and China uh, at this point. So, uh, I, somebody explain this to me. Uh, am, am I just naive and stupid here? I mean, you know, maybe uh, uh, it just seems to me the rest of the world just kind of moving on from the United States and NATO, uh, and, uh, and they're just going to trade in their commodities and, uh, and, and, and their goods. All right, so uh, let's get to the next video. This is a minute and 15 seconds. This is a good video. I, I, I like this. Uh, I don't know who Kishmore Mabubani is. Diplomat from former Singapore, huh? Well, Singapore is a major uh, major player in uh, in financial markets. So let's and it says the John F. Kennedy Jr. Forum, and uh, so this is this is this is huge. Watch this. You know, as someone who travels to at least 30, 40 countries a year, when I come to the United States and I go to my hotel room in Charles Hotel and turn on the television. I feel that I've been cut off from the rest of the world. I literally, the insularity of the American discourse is actually frightening. And I, oh my, 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 this is also true, by the way. I mean, I've said this to my friends there anyway in New York Times. This is true of the New York Times. This is true of the uh, Washington Post. This is true of the Wall Street Journal. There is an incestuous, self-referential 
uh, discourse among these newspaper journalists and so on and so forth and they reinforce each other's perspectives and end up misunderstanding the world because you know the one key point I emphasize is that the era of Western domination of world history was a 200 year aberration it's coming to an end and as a result of it you've got to learn to understand non-Western perspectives in the world I can't say no more than what he just said there. I just find it uh, kind of funny that it's at the John F. Kennedy Jr. Forum. And, uh, boy, I tell you, I did I, I did like John F. Kennedy, and I think he did try to do a lot of good. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a hunger strike. Uh, I, as you know, Ukraine is turning out the monks, uh, burning down the monasteries, and basically uh, the, the Ukrainian uh, Orthodox Christian religion is being persecuted. Uh, I guess it's kind of their last hurrah to uh, the Nazis there. Um, if you want to call them Nazis or the uh, uh, Zelensky, uh, I don't know why they they want to um, to go against these guys. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. It seems to me they need religion at this point. So let's get back into the news. Uh, Pedro Sanchez uh, from Spain uh, is going to visit China with, uh, I call her Ursula von de Crazy from uh, uh, Germany. I, I, I can't imagine, you know, she's, she's a warmonger from, from the get-go. Uh, but uh, they're going to go there to talk about China's peace treaty. Uh, can't imagine, I mean, if Ursula's going along, I can't imagine anything's going to come from that. But uh, maybe Pedro will just punch her in the nose and, uh, and, and get things going. Uh, let's get uh, to the hunger strike because uh, I was telling you about this, and so this is what they're doing. Uh, all of the monks and the uh, Christian Christian Orthodox uh, in Ukraine, uh, they're fighting back as best they can in a peaceful way, and I, I don't think it's going to do no damn good until uh, Russia gets to Kiev and uh, basically um, ousts the government. Because you know Russia is a Orthodox church; uh, they're a Christian nation. So uh, maybe they'll uh, set things right. Что делать? И вот вчера, сегодня даже мы вот задавали этот вопрос. Я бы хотел вот сейчас вот в конце всех призвать, давайте наложим на себя пост. Вот я не знаю, как оно будет, но я бы хотел вот не сегодня, а уже с понедельника. Понедельник, вторник, среду как раз до 29-го. Вот объявить голодовку, если так вот, в светском понимании. Я хочу поехать. Вау, wow, это украинский priest or i don't know what what do you call an orthodox minister i don't know wants to go to russia so I, I, anyway uh yeah the petro dollar is coming to an end i wonder what that's going to mean to all of us here in the united states uh it's going to get things are going to get rough here people we're going to get rough uh because saudi arabia like i said they're going to sell a new one um and, you know, the U.S. dollar is really back to nothing. We had the petrodollar for a while. So I've been thinking about, you know, how do we barter at this point? So today, I, you know, I, I, maybe I'm stupid, right? I bought another 65-inch uh, TV, a TCL, Roku, uh, micro LED, a thousand, well, it was $950 uh, from Amazon. Now, is that a stupid purchase? Because if you listen to the Economic Ninja on YouTube, everything's going to come down in price. And and But the thing is, I think you're going to need things to barter with. And if the goods dry up from China, how much longer are you going to be able to buy those goods? You know, you can't get the 75-inch TVs no more. I've looked into those. That's what I wanted. But, I mean, I'm telling you, I've been watching it for months. I can't find a damn 75-inch TV. So how long before the 65-inch TVs? And then those those TVs, there are going to be some rich people that come out of this on the other end. Uh, and they're going to say, you know what, I want a good 65-inch TV. And it's going to be what, the way that I look at it, it's like Cuba. 
Okay, Cuba, they're still driving around 1970 cars, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> the sanctions have been on them for so long. You're going to have to barter. And so I'm just trying to buy up Chinese goods that I think that we're going to become unavailable here soon. Um, yeah, this is this is a good video. Um, this is a Ukrainian soldier just talking about things, and and this is this is insane. This is statistic of regions of soldiers mobilization. Ah, no, that's that's I don't know. I, I I watched that video. I'm sorry. I got. I got to get through them. Uh, this is, uh, boy, I tell you, talk about living in a dystopian nightmare. Look at this damn. I mean, man, it looks like France, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, except it's Ukraine. Watching the world burn. I, you know, I, I imagine at some point this is going to come to the United States and we're going to see. Well, we've already seen it in Portland and uh, in some of our cities. But, uh, yeah, that's that's crazy, huh? So let's go down. Um, but this is this is an old video. I guess they just posted it again. Um, this was Jing uh, scolding uh, Trudeau. Uh, basically, I mean, you know, it's it's Trudeau is just a child in in charge of Can Canada. Come on, man, you got to get rid of this guy. He's a totalitarian lunatic uh, child that's leaning your country. I don't even understand it. Um, so let's keep going. Um, let's see. I said Brazilian. Oh, that's the other thing is Brazilian pres President Luna. He's going to China to talk about the peace proposal. And that probably uh, solidifies uh, ties for the Brinks nations to get away from the dollar. Uh, it looks like the whole world is ditching the United States uh, as far as alliances and uh, the currencies and everything else. I tell you what, this blowback on the United States is going to be massive. This is what the Democrats wanted. This is what the Democrats engineered. So, uh, and of course, uh, rhino lunatic uh, Republicans that, you know, like Mitch McConnell and all those that are up in U.S. Congress. Uh, so uh, let's keep going. Oh, yeah, massive protest in France. I'm not even, nobody's even covering this in the news. I mean, it's insane. And, uh, oh, my God. I mean, I only find these videos on, uh, well, well, I find them in, well, if you watch Redacted, that's a good channel on uh, on uh, YouTube. Uh, definitely check them out. But uh, this is this is a pretty entertaining video. And, and you know what? I, I, I want to give a message out to the French. You know, okay, you can protest. You got millions of people on the streets. You're burning things all around your country. But what are you doing? You need to march on your capital. Okay, and I understand it didn't work out too good for the January 6th people here in the United States, but that was a peaceful protest. You need to get back to the old, what was it, 1600s when they went in and uh, they marched marched in and they took over uh, the government and chopped their heads off. <laughs> That's what you got to do in Macron. Otherwise, nothing's going to change. You can protest forever. But yeah, let's just watch 51 seconds of their protest. <laughs> sitting there eating your meal <laughs> while, while the, everything's burning down around you police standing next by oh look at that they're just kind of like oh you know I just sit here and chat away i tell you what that that was a hell of a video i thought that was pretty cool Ah, oh, this is this is crazy i you know what i i feel for the the ukrainian soldiers and, and watch this guy i mean eventually you just get to the point where you just don't care no more you know you're like you know what if you want to kill me, kill me. Because, you know, the Ukrainians, it's kind of like uh, what fr France did during World War I uh, or World War II. It might have been, no, it's World War I where they, they executed thousands of soldiers because they wouldn't follow orders and charge the, the German lines. And, you know, it's 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 crazy what the what people do or what people in, in command do. So this is him. And he just said, died to hell with it. I don't care if I die. Нас почало все вже мало. Нас розкрали, вибачте за слово, на глухо. Нас прикомендували до 110-ї. Нас хочуть просто добити. 
і все. Я не знаю, що робити люди, щоб ми просто як тукається знали. Коротше, заграло то все. Ми всі здають мою морду. Наступу вбивають. Тут вбивають, наступу вбивають. І все, нас там ні підтримки, ні підкріплення. Нас там ні Більше я кажу, я не маю нічого сказати, я вже раз тобі її уходжу. Нас кожен виїзд, як тут вводиться. Мінус, мінус і мінус. Називається мінус, називається двіста. Все, дякую. That's a soldier that has done some, I can, can't blame him. Ah, right, this is more on the protest in France. Like I said, French, I mean, if you're going to do all this, just go march on Macron and, and chop his head off. That's that's my advice to you, rather than burning up your country. Uh, so, you know, cash is trash. Uh, the dollar is doomed. Um, and so I keep looking at what, what assets do you want? Well, obviously, grow a garden. Uh, get you some vegetables. I mean, I was out today, daggone it. I'm every damn day I'm working. I bought two more pepper plants today and, uh, uh, you know, I continue to work in my backyard. I live in an HOA community and uh, so I got to disguise all this. I'm trying to hide everything. So I like these night videos. I like to work these in. As you can see, I haven't made much progress. I'm putting the soil in the garden and, uh, of course, we have the Piles of dirt here. Boy, listen to the bugs. Can you hear them? Let's well, check it out. Check it out. So, I live in an HOA. They will not let me grow vegetables. They hate vegetables. They can't stand people growing their own food. These old people, they're the ones. They can't stand anybody in the community being able to grow their own food. Well, guess what? what I'm working on it I'm working on it every day because see this was meant to be a raised garden see a raised garden would have been much easier because then I just could have brought some wood up and uh, and just put some dirt in there and dropped it no nope, no nope. I got to dig this whole damn thing out and uh, and get rid of this dirt I make a trip every day every day I get rid of the dirt check it out there's the tools now what I'm gonna do so you see this board right here all right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop that board in because right down here is a, see that wire right along there? That is a fiber wire going over to my neighbor's house who actually has a business that the community doesn't know about. So it's all in disguise at this point. He, Because we're not supposed to have businesses in the community either. So we can't make a living in an HOA, or, nor can we grow our own vegetables. But uh, you have to just work around the system, people work around the system i i'm considering you know i got to get the i'm gonna get some blueberry plants i'm looking into all kinds of stuff i'm educating myself on how to grow food i wish i could have chickens uh but i did i, I found a place uh, that and they have fresh eggs here in florida luckily it's not too far it's only about uh 40 40 minutes away and uh Boy, I get fresh eggs, and they put them in there all the time. So I imagine I'm never going to do without eggs. But, boy, if you live in a city, you're you're going to be in trouble. That's for damn sure. Uh, this is crazy. Look at this. I mean, these are Russians making f fun of a Ukrainian uh, soldier that's trying to get picked up by an armored vehicle. And, you know, in, in the Marine Corps, we would never do this. Watch this. He just no, it's no. horrible. Man, man, I'm going to kill you for that. Плюс. 
он еще бежит следом. Он ушел за ней от них. Следи бежит, бежит, бежит. Давай, давай, Брат ты, брат ты! Забери ты меня, забери! Вот с меня забыл! С ним ты снимаешь? Да, да, да. Как укропы по братину бросили. Understand they could kill this guy any time they want. They're just watching it in, in disbelief. Ah, uh, let's see, grow a garden, uh, cash in. Oh, yeah, and so what tangible assets should you be putting it in? Well, like I said, I bought a 65-inch TV. That's probably a stupid tangible asset. But uh, right now, uh, I, Rick Rule was on, and uh, boy, I tell you, if you ever want to watch him, he's on YouTube all over the place. And uh, he was recommending the Sprott uh, Uranium, I want to say ETFs or uh, or mutual funds or whatever. Yeah, the Uranium... And so I, I, I'm going to look into that. I got to see where it's at. If it's gone up a whole lot, I'm not going to put into it. But everybody's going into gold and silver and platinum right now. And I think they may be just ignoring uranium. And that would be probably a good place to be. And I'm going to look into that. And I'll let you know what comes out of that. This is not investment advice. It's just things that I'm looking into. Ah, uh, boy, oh boy, CNN. <laughs> oh, my God. They're down to 80,000 views. Uh, in prime time. I mean, there are YouTube channels that get more views than that. Holy shit, they're, they're a dying breed. Uh, I tell you what, get woke, go broke. This is a pretty cool video. And So that's the flamethrower, and then we've got Ukraine's uh, retaliation. Well, I've already played this video. I think this is Russian paratroopers that walked out. Well, let's yeah, let's watch Trump here for just one second. Either the deep state destroys America, or we destroy the deep state. That's the way it's got to be. We're at a very pivotal point in our country. Either we descend into a lawless abyss of open borders, rampant killings, super hyperinflation, which is what we have right now and not coming down, and festering corruption, or we evict Joe Biden and the Democrats from the White House and we make America great again. And this, I didn't even know what's going on. Look at this. This is what's going on in Israel right now. What the hell? I mean, look at all these people. Now, I don't read Israeli, but what is this protest about? Somebody tell me. So then we get to Putin. Uh, Clint the Glee agree the Nord Stream attack was organized. One day, I think it will be exposed what happened really there. But I think an American journalist, very well known now, very well 
no one would. After an investigation came to a conclusion that this explosion, this attack, had been organized by the U.S. Security Service, a point of view that I completely agree with. This is Putin on the Western pro war. Uh, by the way, there are, uh, I didn't even, you know, I didn't even know about this, but it's been going on for the last year. There are a bunch of people that went over uh, and pretended that they were fighting for Ukraine. Uh, one guy from CNN, actually, <laughs> I guess he got fired or something. I mean, you'd have to watch the videos. It's on redacted. And, uh, and they've been milking the American people for donations to, to help them fight in Ukraine for Ukraine. And they were never fighting. They were just making millions of dollars. I don't even know how the whole damn scheme that got set up. But uh, let's watch Putin, Putin on pro-Western, pro-war. The Chinese president uh, focused and paid quite a lot of attention on the matter of uh, the positive aspects of the China's uh, peace settlement proposal on Ukraine the same day when he talked to me about this and when he tried to persuade me uh, that uh, the Chinese settlement plan by peaceful means has a lot of positive messages. It, we learned about the, the same day about the delivery of one billion shells by uh, the Western countries to Ukraine. And right before we met the press, we learned about the statement by the UK to deliver depleted uranium shells to Ukraine as if they were doing this intentionally in order to derail our talks or to influence our talks in any way. So there is this impression that they were doing this intentionally with an agenda in their mind. So, um, and you can compare the approaches. They have an aggressive rhetoric and they talk about arms supplies while China is talking about the peace settlement on the other side. So, you know what? Let's, let's look at how we get uh, a lot of our uh, green uh, New Deal minerals. <laughs> Let's watch the high Mars go off here. I'm sorry, I you know I can only remember so much in my brain head or my pea brain. This is a U.S. high Mars uh, being shot from Ukraine, and the Ukrainian soldiers are cheering them on. But no, this isn't a proxy war. Ukraine's fighting this all on their own. They got no NATO support or anything. You know, there's not millions and millions and millions and millions of U.S. dollars. All our borders unsecure, and we got fentanyl pouring across the border. Uh, thousands, hundreds of thousands of Americans dying. Terrorists coming across. This is what the Democrats want, you know. But uh, but we can we can send all this to Ukraine. World makes no sense to me. I can tell you that. Well, this is interesting. This thirty-second video. This is Canada. They're sending all of their munitions to uh, Ukraine. Boy, I tell you, what's what's NATO going to have left to fight with? <laughs> I mean, everything's going to Ukraine. Hell, we might as well just take take the Great Lakes, bottle them up, send all the fresh water in the universe to Ukraine. I mean, I guess this is the last role of NATO in the United States uh, to try to uh, say the West dominates the world, but I think the world's moving on from the West. Let's watch green energy at work. Uh, by the way, y'all, you Democrat liberal lunatics out there, this is how you get your cobalt. I would love to put some Democrats down in there, wouldn't you? Maybe put Nancy Pelosi in there and, and see how she uh, put a put a spike in her hand, have her just like hammering away. I, I would love that. Maybe Lindsey Graham. Let's throw a neocon Republican idiot down in there. And uh, by, by the way, I'd like to see him carry one of them bags on his back. You know, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you love that? I think I'd love to see that. Yeah. yeah. How about uh, Chuck Schumer? I'd like to see Chuck Schumer, one of them hammers in his hand, hammering away at his, for his green energy. Oh, oh, and God knows AOC. Holy moly, I'd love to see her in there. Working for, what, $2 a day? Yeah, yeah, let's put AOC down in there. Oh, man, I tell you. 
Well, that's it for this video. You guys, peace out. Stay free. Why, well, what's nine more seconds? Let's watch the last of it. Might as well. There we go. There we go. There we go. Come on, Nancy. Go over there. All right, you guys have a good one. That's it for today's uh, March 27th, watching the world burn. It's good, 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 good to live in the free, free Republican state of Florida under the great leadership of Governor DeSanctimonious. All right. Watching the world burn, watching the world burn. Wednesday, March 29th, 2023. Well, let's get into the news. Uh, the first video I wanted to get into was this is just a brief clip from the school from the... Uh, well, it was reported that it was a woman, then it was a young girl, and uh, now we found out it was a trans student who uh, hated Christians and uh, went into the school and shot everybody. And uh, But I want you to kind of watch this for just one second. Look how easy this is. Okay, so here they come up on the video. Well, let's, I want to fast forward. Let's fast forward just a second. There we go. All right, so basically, there's no security here. Look at this. Boom! They're going to shoot right through the door. Well, this trans woman or trans male or whatever you want to call them. I mean, you know, I guess uh, in this day and age, we don't know the difference in gender, do we, anymore, huh? And, uh, you know, they just come right through. Where's the security? Where's the armed security? Then they come in, and we're just going to watch a brief clip here. Luckily, there's no death and destruction in this video. But you can see this uh, this young man. He's hunting. He's hunting. Who can I shoot? Let me go in this room. All right, that's it for this video. But I wanted to make my point. Well, actually, I'll make the point while the video plays. There are a lot of veterans a lot of older veterans that you can employ for ten dollars an hour now think about it school administrative uh, officials they make upwards of a hundred two hundred thousand dollars a year in some of these schools how much would it cost to pay a veteran ten dollars an hour to basically come in and work eight hour well actually a six hour day because that's what i think most schools are uh, and just sit there as an armed security guard it wouldn't cost you much money as a school whatsoever. And I say armed veterans because cops are a bit more expensive. Um, you know, they, uh, I don't know why they command a greater price than a veteran because uh, veterans are better trained in, in most weapons. Uh, it doesn't make sense to me. How many veterans do you see on the street corners begging for food? Imagine what they would do for a $10 an hour job just to protect these kids. And I guarantee you they do a good damn job. Uh, this is an interesting video. Russian VDVs assault. And by the way, this is the Russian Ukraine updates channel on Rumble. Russian Ukraine's channel on Rumble. But let's get into some of the news here real quick. Uh, so, um, oh yeah, I was watching the Economic Ninja in uh, Galantis. I'm going to get the ticker symbol on that. And I'll get that out in a future video. Uh he was doing a video with uh, whoever this is. It looks like a pretty good exploration company. Uh, this is not financial advice, but something that uh, I want to invest in because yeah, he's got a good channel. I mean, I, I like watching him. Uh, I did find out uh, Turkey. Holy shit. Turkey is buying gold hand over fist. Now, think about it. They've got runaway inflation in Turkey. So why are they buying so much gold? And they are looking to join the BRICS. So I tell you what, de-dollarization is happening on a colossal scale. I hope you understand that when all them dollars come running home, uh, your dollars are not going to buy much no more. And so what have I done? I don't know. Probably stupidity. I bought another 65-inch TV because that's kind of uh, what I do is I just roll around the TV and uh, make videos and, I mean, of course, go for hikes and uh, anyway, and I'm hoping the barterability, I don't think you're going to be able to get these TVs much longer and they're dirt cheap right now. Uh, now are they going to get cheaper? Probably temporarily. Uh, but what, what 
the economic ninja doesn't tell you is the unavailability. You know, once once the dollars come running home and we can't buy Chinese goods and we can't buy uh, things from overseas, we're going to be like Cuba. Where are you going to get this stuff at? It's only what we have left here in the United States, and that's where your barterability comes from for TVs or food or, or precious metals or whatever you want to say. I'm just telling you, these are... These are things that I'm looking into. So let's watch this uh, Russian VDV assaulting Ukraine positions. I thought this was a good video. Very interesting. <laughs> Now, one thing I want to point out, watch this. This is a armored personnel area, armored personnel carrier, okay? Uh, they're coming into a location. And now, obviously, the artillery has bombarded this position. And these are the guys dispatching from the vehicle. Look how fast they get out. Because you don't want to be in that vehicle when it gets hit. And so now they're out in the forest, and they're just trying to clear things around. But obviously, the this has been massively bombarded. So basically, this is just kind of a... You know, a clear up force. Uh, they're coming in to just make sure that there's no uh, Ukrainians left uh, that uh, might pop up out of the ground. And uh, we'll get here in just a second because there are some foxholes. Now, what I don't really understand is, okay, here in just a second, they're just going to shoot down in the foxhole. Why not just drop a hand grenade down in there? Right? Boy, and look at them foxholes. Can you imagine what it would take to dig something like that? And what it'd be like to live in something like that for a period of time. I mean, what are you, a hobbit? <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh my God. This is a, what a horrible war this is. Peace, people, peace. We need peace. This is, this is not any way for human beings to treat each other. Um, anyway, so watch here in just a second. He's going to, he'll fire, well, you know, there's a Ukrainian clip. I guess it's supposed to be decorated as a Ukrainian flag, huh? So, yeah, okay, let's spend a couple rounds down in the hole. But, well, maybe just doesn't have no hand grenades, you know? But anyway, this what I wanted to explain to you is this is just a mop-up operation. This, this, this fortification of Ukrainian whatever infantry was was heavily bombarded by uh russian artillery and then they sent in the um the troops just to just to make sure there's nothing left so let's get on to the next video i don't need to all ah, right this this was funny uh, it was the new standards in the u.s it shows a bunch of <laughs> a bunch of trans men dressed up like women i mean you know anyone any american can turn into a woman i tell you what they're pushing this stuff through russia I, you know i kind of agree uh, uh by the way uh, i didn't realize you know well in philadelphia and washington dc i mean i guess what goes around comes around a lot of these pharmaceuticals are ending up in the drinking water. Probably not good for you. Probably not good. Uh, of course, you know, we know that artificial intelligence, so you can follow the other videos on that. I'm not going to talk about that. Let me get into the next news item here. Let's see what we got. Wow, France deployed 13,000 police officers to establish peace. <laughs> Imagine in the United States if we uh, put 13,000 troops on the streets uh, to establish peace uh, while the Black Lives Matter or Antifa were burning down buildings and everything. That would have been an interesting uh, news story here in the United States. Oh, yeah, and of course, you know, we always, if you ever want to watch the video with Macron taking off his $80,000 watch uh, in that video, that was pretty funny. I, I tell you what, uh, I wonder wonder what uh, the French people are thinking of all of that. And like I said, you know, I understand you want to burn your whole damn country down, France, but God dang it, just march on the capital, baby. You know, go go, go back to, you know, the 1600s, uh, the French Revolution. Seems to me that's where you are. I don't see why you just want to march around the streets. And uh, and they, I tell you what, it's pretty damn violent. I'm watching the protests. Uh, 
I don't think I got any videos of that on on uh, Russia Ukraine updates here, but uh, man, I tell you, it's uh, France is on fire right now. Uh, Macron, I don't know. It, it, as long as the French people just march around the streets and burn up cars and businesses, uh, he's probably safe in his capital building with uh, all of his uh, troops surrounding that. I wonder what the uh, Germans think of the pipeline story now. It's because it's getting a lot of traction, uh, and I'm seeing a lot bigger protests in Germany right now about the U.S. blowing up the Nord Stream pipeline. And, uh, and I, I wonder what they think, because the German tanks, uh, they're showing up on the battlefield in Ukraine right now. I mean, if I was a German, I'd be thinking, well, the last time we went to war with Russia, it did not end well. <laughs> you know, the Russians came in, I mean, in a much more, oh, this, of course, it was the Soviet Union back then. They came in in a much more fierce way uh, than the Russians. Uh, the, of course, the Russians is a Christian Orthodox nation today. Uh, doesn't mean they're going to be friendly to Germans. But the last time Germany went to war with Russia, the Russians came in. They raped every single woman in Germany. Uh, they butchered butchered the Germans. Uh, they, they, the German 6th Army, 90, what 98,000 of them surrendered. Only 5,000 survived. It just doesn't end well for Germany every time they want to fight Russia. And I can't believe they're going to make that mistake all over again, but it just looks like they are. So Germany, whatever. And of course, the United States too. We are, um, well, luckily we have an ocean between us and them, but I don't think it's going to end well for us either. Uh, this is a pretty cool video. Check this out. By the way, you know, this is the difference. You know, when we fought Iraq, Libya, Syria, Bosnia, Vietnam, Let's see, how many freaking wars have we fought in the last uh, 50 years that uh, the, the Congress didn't authorize and just went along with? Well, guess what? Now you're fighting hand-in-hand, toe-in-toe with a force that has the same weapons that you do. In fact, some of them are more advanced. Guess what, United States? I think you finally bit off more than you can chew. Because this is what the Russians have. And when you, uh, oh, or Afghanistan, yeah, well, let's see, let's put Afghanistan, Iran, let's see, uh, Yemen. Well, we're going into Haiti now. Hi, of course, Nicaragua, Honduras. All the wars we fought, none of them have been like this. They didn't have these weapons and these systems. Russia Ukraine updates can't promote their channel enough. Oh my goodness. Let's get back to the news. Um, oh Jesus. Oh holy moly. Getting into the news here. Uh, Colonel McGregor gets his news from. He made a bold statement today. And I, it, it, I'm sure it won't get covered in the news. It's not getting covered on other YouTube channels. I'm, I'm, he said that Bakhmut is ready to fall. I mean, I mean, literally fall. I put down Bakhmut Falls, uh, what, a couple of weeks ago. and uh, But that's because everything that I was seeing just said, you know, it was a hopeless cause and Bakhmut Falls. And I don't know, you know, if you watch uh, Johnny Bravo or some of the YouTube channels, it's all about sensationalism and you got to put it up. And actually, I didn't think it would last this long. He said within the next three days uh, that... There's going to be nothing left of Ukraine in Bakhmut. That was a bold statement. I don't know where he gets this information from. I'm just saying that's what he said. You know, you make of that what you will. You make of that what you will. So let's uh, let's get into this. Uh, this is another cool video. This is um, T-72 tanks. Metropolitan fighting. Yeah, this is the... I enjoyed this one. Man, look at that Ukrainian mud, huh? So this is the difference. Imagine if the Taliban had these weapons, huh? <laughs> it might have been a whole different... Of course, they got these weapons now because we gave them to them after we pulled up. By the way, did you watch those videos where uh, 
the Taliban were displaying all the U.S. equipment that we left behind, that trader Millie and that trader Austin that left them all of the U.S. equipment. So now the Taliban got this equipment, but the, the key is how can they maintain it? And can they, look at that mud. Holy moly. But see, this is this is war on a whole different scale, you know. I mean, we spent what 2014 to 2023 arming Ukraine for this war, and look at what the Russians are doing to them. I'm telling you, Russia is where armies go to die. Even after that many years of us putting weapons into Ukraine, they still couldn't make it, manage to make it work against Russia, which is amazing. I mean, the West, uh, they gambled everything on Ukraine to defeat Russia, and, well, it just ain't working out for them, is it? Well, this was an interesting story because uh, uh, Blinken, uh, the idiot Blinken, that's what I like to call him, he's telling India that, you know, they want out of the G20 summit coming up, I guess, what, September? It's a long ways away. I mean, good God, things are going to change so much between now and then. It's going to be unbelievable. But uh, anyway, he was telling them that, you know, you have to condemn Russia. And, and India is like, we got no skin in this game. We don't, we don't need to condemn Russia. We just want to live peacefully with the world. It's you're the United States. You're the ones who got the bone to pick with Russia. Uh, we just want their oil, and we want to trade with Russia and uh, make tons of money. So that's India. And so I don't think there's going to be a G20 summit because India is supposed to host that, and uh, and they're telling the United. I mean, I'm trying to tell you what the United States is pissing everybody the fuck off. Uh, India, I mean, uh, Brazil, I mean, it, it, is this by design? I mean, maybe Biden got elected to just totally alienate the United States from the rest of the world. Uh, he's a hidden asset uh, of who knows, maybe Xi Jinping or, uh, well, I don't, uh, it, his animosity towards Russia seems to be real. So I don't, I don't understand it, but it just seems like his administration is doing everything they can to destroy the United States. I mean, I don't, how else can you explain it all? I mean, he's pissing India off. He's pissing off the dollar, the de-dollarization that's taking place. Oh, my God. I, the American people have no fucking idea what's coming back. This is things going to boomerang. I hope you're prepared for hyperinflation because I don't see any way around it. I mean, hell, even, even Japan. <laughs> Japan and Russia just struck a huge oil drilling deal. So even Japan's turning against the United States. I, I Well, I guess kind of Australia seems to be on board with this, but who knows? So let's get to another. Uh, this is Russia paratroopers conduct raids to get up. I've already I've already watched that video a number of times. I won't get into that one. But look at this. This is this is another 22 seconds of what's going on. France. Come on, French. March on your capital, man. I mean, I understand you want to march around and make noise. This ain't going no not good. Macron, don't give a fuck about your damn protest. You're going to have to march on the Capitol. And then, guess what? Some of you are going to die. You know what? You're going to die. That's the only way you're going to change things is to overthrow your government. I understand marching around in the streets. Uh, it's a lot safer that way. Oh, here we go. Here's a Fachi video. Let's, let's, uh, let's watch what he has to say. What do we say if we have a family member who is still hesitant about getting the vaccine? Well, I would reason with that person by just showing them the data. And the data are overwhelmingly dramatic. If you look at the curve of deaths and hospitalization among unvaccinated people compared to vaccinated and boosted people, you really don't need a statistician to tell you what the right thing to do is. It really makes a lot of sense to protect yourself from serious illness and even protecting your family from getting them infected. 
Ah, you know, he's still in government now. And, uh, of course, Ron Paul says it's so that he can get the federal government to pay uh, for him getting prosecuted for uh, criminal crimes against the world. Um, I, hell, you can't blame him. I'd, I'd stay in the government and get the government to pay for my, uh, my political prosecution as well. Check this out. All right. <coughs> It sucks to be a police officer in France right now, doesn't it? <laughs> now, the only thing they could do is pull out the water cannons and uh, the guns. And I guess, you know, if, if I was the police, I mean, you got to kind of take this abuse. Because once the guns come out and the water cannons, I mean, you're going to have a full-fledged revolution. Right now, the people feel like, okay, you know, we can, we can beat up on our police and, and they're going to back off. And they feel like they're winning, and they're not winning anything, unfortunately. Ah, uh, last uh, piece of news is Av, Avdivnika. Avdivnika? God, God, I had the pronunciation for that, but uh, it looks like that's, uh, like Bakhmut, um, looks like that's going to fall within the next couple of days. So, uh, holy shit. I mean, I, I think the war in Ukraine, I wonder how the Western media is going to spin all this. You know, isn't it going to be interesting to hear in the next couple of weeks as, as the war in Ukraine turns rapidly? Uh, you know, what are they going to say? They're, oh, Bakhmut wasn't anything important or uh, uh, the counteroffensive is going to come from Ukraine. Uh, you know, it's, I, I just, I can't, I mean, I, I, I guess I'm kind of a, weird person i want to just see how the media is going to spin all of this uh, but avnadika is going to fall and of course bakhmut according to mcgregor is going to fall within the next uh, week or so and uh let's let's get uh, one more french video this is 18 seconds hey where's the western media on all this huh <laughs> Oh, there ain't nothing going on over in Europe. I'm going to tell you, they, Europeans are peacefully going along with the whole global agenda. The numbers, oh yeah, I'm sure you've seen this where Biden was being an idiot. Uh, six people dead in Nashville and he comes out talking about ice cream. Uh, I won't give that any uh, any time on my channel. Yeah, challenge. this is a video of the Challenger 2 tanks are now delivered with uranium depleted ammo. Uh, not a good idea. But let's watch this. This is this is this is the grave the graves in Ukraine. This is the results of war, and I want you to feel. I want you to feel this, okay? She's not speaking English, but I want you to know what it's like. Uh, Civil War here in the United States, World War One, World War Two, and now we've got the Ukraine War. <laughs> где похоронили всех вампиров в горячем ключе. Очень большое кладбище. Свежие все погибли. Нет конца и края. И молодые все, и все подростков. Знаешь, что вам интересно? This video goes on and on and on, showing you all the fresh graves. All right, I won't make you watch the whole thing. It tears my heart to pieces. I was trying to find the great the video about the latest numbers. Um, anyway, let's talk about Russian air power. Uh, they are bringing out the, uh, the air power more and more, which means that the Ukrainian air defenses are uh, pretty much uh, depleted at this point. 
Otherwise, they and, and they, while well, the planes are still flying low, so there are still some air defenses left. Oh, this this was an interest. 18 seconds, excuse me. Does this look like a hellhole or what? It's what it's like to live in Ukraine right now. And the United States will not negotiate for peace. No way, no how. Because it's not our country right now. But it will be someday. It's March 28, so okay, it's just... The armed forces of the Russian Federation continue the special military operation. In the Kupan's direction, army aviation strikes and artillery fire of the Zapad group of forces inflicted fire damage on enemy manpower and military equipment in the areas of Durechnoye, Sinkovka, Kislovka in Kharkov region, and Novoselovsko and Stelmakovka in Lugansk People's Republic. The enemy has lost up to 65 Ukrainian troops, two motor vehicles, one Polish-made crop self-propelled howitzer, one Akatsa self-propelled howitzer, as well as two D-30 howitzers. In the Krasny Leman direction, Russian aviation, artillery and heavy flamethrower systems of the center group of forces hit units of the armed forces of Ukraine close to Nevskoye in Lugansk People's Republic, Yampolovka and Grigorovka in Donetsk People's Republic. Up to 85 Ukrainian troops, two armored fighting vehicles, and one D-30 howitzer were destroyed. In the Donetsk direction, the U group of forces, aviation and artillery fire, over 400 Ukrainian troops, four armored fighting 400? vehicles, 10 motor vehicles, four no, that's trucks, an unusual one number. rocket motor vehicle, so that's and one D-20 howitzer. In the South Donetsk and Zaporozhye directions, operational tactical and army aviation, missile troops and artillery of the Vostok group of forces inflicted fire damage on Ukrainian units close to Vladimirovka, Novopol of Donetsk People's Republic, and Malaya Tokmachka and Sharbaki in Zaporozhye region. The enemy's losses have amounted to over 40 Ukrainian troops, two pickup trucks, and one D-20 howitzer in this direction during the day. In the Kherson direction, so up to 30 Ukrainian Ukrainian troops, two motor vehicles, and one Gwazdika self-propelled howitzer have been destroyed over the past 24 hours. Operational tactical and army aviation, missile troops and artillery of the Russian group of forces have engaged 93 Ukrainian artillery units at their firing positions, manpower and military equipment in 107 areas during the day. An ammunition depot of the 103rd Territorial Defense Brigade of the Ukrainian Armed Forces has been destroyed close to Verstavoye in Kharkov region. Russian air defense facilities have shut down one made helicopter of the Ukrainian Air Force near Timirovka in Zaporozhye region. Moreover, 13 Ukrainian unmanned aerial vehicles were shut down close to Kremennaya, Rubizhnoye, Golikovo in Lugansk People's Republic, and Marinka, Olginka, and Novi Svet in Donetsk People's Republic. In total, 404 airplanes, 226. All right, I always read these numbers myself. So we're looking at upwards of 500 to 1,000 Ukrainian soldiers dead each day. Uh, I don't even know how they can sustain these numbers. Uh, imagine there's a lot of Polish uh, troops, a lot of mercenaries in there. Hell, maybe even some ISIS uh, mercenaries that uh, the United States is paying for while the dollar is still worth something. Uh, I, you know, that's the big story, uh, this video. I mean, the de-dollarization that's taking place. Um, count your days. Uh, if you got money in the bank, I suggest you put it into assets, of whatever asset you want. Whether it be big screen TVs or uh, oil or um, um, mining stocks, uh, you know, this is not financial advice. I'm just telling you, uh, farmland, um, uh, you know, not a good time to be buying uh, housing or, or vehicles or anything like that. Uh, if you got your powder dry, hold on to it. I'm not saying the dollar is going to devalue overnight, but it's happening rapidly. So let's uh, read the numbers. 404 airplanes, 226 helicopters, 3,600 unmanned aerial vehicles, 414 air defense missile systems, 8,421 tanks and other armored fighting vehicles, 1,074 multiple rocket launchers, 4,447 field artillery cannons and mortars, and 9,146 special military motor vehicles. NATO, you are being defanged. I think everything you got's being destroyed by the Ruskies. Peace out, stay free, and it's good, good, good to live in the free, free, free Republican state of Florida under the great leadership of Governor DeSanctimonious. You know, as we move on in the world, um, 
the Western nations, the um, United States, everybody, we are in deep, deep trouble as the globalists move against us. And I just think this uh, Ukrainian military uh, soldier just says what we are all feeling and experiencing in our lives. Доброго дня, побратимі. Українці. Ви бачите, що твориться в нашій державі? І да, я і там військовослужбовець там на збройних сил туди сюди. Да, я там з другого дня на війні, ну, суть не в цьому. Суть в тому, що ви бачите, що твориться в Україні. Сейчас держава The government is still in the budget. Який який їй надходить? Там зі сторони там Штатів, Європи, ну там, не знаю, ну, свічки не держав. Ну, по If you're not buying silver gold, and trying to protect your assets, you're just done. Повышается там электроэнергия. Повышается там They're getting desperate, especially in the western nations. Вона, ну, вона не збільшується, вона просто, ну, ці не збільшуються, заробітна плата остається на на місці. Тобто, ну, народ України просто зараз Ну, знищують. And they're making you poor. За, за що ті пенсіонери будуть жити? Я мовчу. Просто за що буде цивільний народ жити? Це, yeah. це, це And дуже... Of course, they dumb, stupid, retired are not paying attention. attention. They're going to lose everything. Може, давайте щось зробити? Може, знайдеться якийсь такий агітатор, який може проспонсірувати і може, ну, блін, ну, ця влада нам не потрібна. Це правда. This may have copyright. You know, at, at this point, I just don't care. I mean, you know, obviously copyright, they get the proceeds. Uh, of course, my channel's not even monetized, <laughs> so I don't care about copyright. But... This is a great song, and I, I want to read the subtitles to you as it goes along. I respect the fact that, that they are fighting for what they believe is their freedom. How can things in the land of the steps grow oh, cold dumps? I heard that enemies came to our land. And they want to destroy everything as quickly as possible. I've known it every town since my childhood. Donbass, like the first, all over the news. Donbass, save your children. As Donbass, let my day land. The bass. I guess, you know, it's too fast for me to read. I'm just going to let it go. And this is what plays all over Ukraine. Rise Dumbass! Rise Dumbass! Let me pause right here because Donbass has been bombed. I mean, by the Ukrainians since 2014. So if you want to understand the, the, the meaning behind this song, it says Mother Russia is with you. And they are. They've, they've came in, they've invaded Ukraine, uh, and they are pushing the Ukrainians back so that they can no longer launch artillery shells after 2014 for how many years? I mean, what's that, 2014 to 2023? I can't even do the math in my head. These people have been bombed. Mother Russia is with you. Мама, жизнь продолжалась от Донецка 
города Одессы И сиренели города Василий Уголь поезда дымили трубы, как всегда Мама, как сорок первым завода Пришли к нам песы Демонс came to us from the west They are in our doors, shooting our wives and our mothers, burning people alive. Rise them by us. Let's kick out the hunter and kill them. Rise them by us. You're the new beast. The United States wanted to take propaganda to a new level i think they need to like work on you know work up their their game here that to me i mean my god that that motivates me hell i want to go fight for the donbass all right let's keep going okay we have memorial day here in the united states well obviously in other countries they have their own so let's watch this Торжественное, трагичное мероприятие. К сожалению, уже такая традиция сложилась у нас, что мы 9 лет начинаем 1 июня именно здесь, в парке Щорса, у памятника погибшим детям Луганской Народной Республики. Присутствовали также и задержанные украинские военнослужащие, которые своим деятельным раскаянием помогли нам высадить сегодня в память наших погибших детей деревья. Мы в вашем случае понимаем, что, к сожалению, уже слишком большой временной период, все-таки, да, десятый даже год идет этой войны, два года. Now, she said the tenth year of this war. Это очень, конечно, хочется, чтобы, посмотрев на нас, на мирных людей, на наших деток, живых, погибших, что-то в голове щелкнуло. See, this is what Americans in the West don't understand. This war has been going on for many years. We need peace. Peace at any cost. Мало, чтобы больше не было таких смертей, вот, что все люди просто могли спокойно жить и улыбаться, радоваться. That's the truth of most people. And this is the most emotional video that makes me cry. I actually will cry tonight, and I will say a prayer to God. Most Americans don't even know. They have no clue what's been going on. Imagine your life ending as a young person. I mean, I fell down the stairs a year ago Parts my limbs are paralyzed. I have no feeling in my hands. But these these young children were their life ended at a young age. So God puts us through many things in life, and uh, falling down the stairs a year ago, and uh, having no feeling in my hands, and uh, no temperature feeling in my feet you know i at least i got to live my life um and do many stupid things <laughs> my god if you watch my videos you're thinking how the hell is this guy still alive but think about these children who won't ever in for the rest of their lives be crippled see the future of the donbass look at this look at the destruction for nine years, the Ukrainians have been bombing the Donbass. A 
I'm surprised it's just 130. Yeah, you might say those are small numbers, but I mean, any number of children killed is terrible. Save the Donbass, save its children. And this is the message that um, people in the United States don't get. People are dying on the other side of these. I understand that. That's the sad thing about my damn channel. I wish this was all science fiction or some movie. It's not. This is reality. And nobody seems to care. Where's the outrage in the United States? Where's the outrage in the Western countries? Why are we at war in Ukraine? What the hell does Ukraine have to do with the United States? You know, I'm glad that Russia puts out these videos, but, you know, they just want to show you what's going on. These are people dying. For what? For what? Why can't we exist peacefully? Let's trade. Russia's got a huge fertilizer. I mean, we need the fertilizer from there. We need... Okay, I'll finish off with this. I mean, what the hell? Do you think this is normal? The U.S. Empire is coming to an end. The U.S. Empire is done. All right, watching the world burn, watching the world burn, June 6, 2023. Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, June 7th, 2023. Let's watch the wildfires in Canada. A lot of speculation. Seemed like a lot of places went up all at once. Maybe those open borders are coming back to haunt us, huh? Maybe they were a bunch of illegal aliens that went out in that forest and just lit a gazillion fires, huh? Maybe they were Chinese operatives or Russian operatives. We don't know because the borders are open. That's what the Democrats want. They want open borders. How did the fire start in so many locations and on such a massive scale? I do ask you that, conspiracy theorists. I always try to bring you the clips of the hardware in operation. I wonder why Ukraine never posts any videos. Let's watch this. And I wonder if we'll have these on our shores someday, firing at U.S. cities. How would we feel about that here in the United States, I wonder? Of course, it's not just Canada on fire watching the world burn. The Mayan volcano sends the Philippines into alert mode. Imagine living at the base of that beastie, huh? Although they don't look too concerned, do they? So it seems like what goes around comes around. This is what I saw 
during the war in Kuwait, except it was a lot thicker. You really couldn't see more than about, oh, I'd say 20 or 30 feet. Uh, this is, I guess, New York City got a taste of what it's like to live under war in Kuwait. That's from the wildfires in Canada. So visibility's pretty good. Everybody's panicking about it. Uh, it was funny because I had brought in masks to everybody. Uh, actually, my ex-wife sent the masks over, and I told them, I said, you need to wear a mask, man. You don't want to be breathing all of this, uh, uh, well, it, you know, a lot thicker than this, and that's bacteria. This is just smoke. There you go. There's somebody with a mask on. Got some common sense. Yeah, and, and, of course, the people in my company, they didn't, they didn't put the masks on. Some of them developed lung problems later on. I didn't feel any sympathy for them. I had the mask hanging right on the wall in the shop. I told them, you can put them on or not. So there are still many theories about the uh, dam um, that gave way and uh, flooded. Uh, well, I'll have a video on that in just a minute. But I guess the, well, we know for sure that the Ukrainians were pumping up the water to, uh, to, to basically put a lot more pressure on that dam. Now, we don't know at this point whether it was an explosion or previous explosions that caused the dam to break away. But this is the latest from the Russians on what they feel happened. Ukrainian authorities released vast amounts of water into the Dnieper River from a hydroelectric power station under their control, leading to the collapse of the Kahovskaya Dam downstream. That's led to devastating flooding in the Kherson region. Video as well has now emerged appearing to show the massive release of that water on purpose. You can see opened sluice gates forcing water to thunder into the river. Russia's Security Council Secretary has said NATO must face blame too for the disaster as it essentially gave the green light for actions to be carried out by Kiev. At the direction of Kiev, a large-scale discharge of water was carried out at the Dnepr hydroelectric station, located upstream, and then there was another strike on the Kahovska Dam, exacerbating the consequences of the flood. Blowing up the Kahovska hydroelectric power plant dam is yet oh, another So they're saying there was another strike on the dam. The Kiev regime aimed at harming civilians and destroying infrastructure. The U.S. cannot say who is responsible for the blast. At the same time, it is known that the U.S., Britain and their NATO partners are coordinating the activities of the Ukrainian army. Accordingly, they give their consent to the attack and should be held accountable for this cynical act. Not well, it's an act of terrorism. Of Actually, it's against they're the Geneva Accords. In the head. They, they, they are hurting their own uh, in infrastructure in doing that. It's a sign of desperation. Kyiv is trying to stop any uh, Russian offensive. And, and uh, while it's, while it's uh, the Pentagon is still, still can't figure out who, who blew the dam further down, it's, uh, it's uh, having this, this dam released purposely having water All right, so let's dam, get the overhead uh, footage the of what it's, it looks uh, like after the dam broke. That, uh, so this is on Russia Ukraine updates. Always got to give credit where credit is due. But this is a panorama of the flood zone in the Kyrgyzstan region. Can't imagine. And I wonder what that smoke is in the distance. I wish there was some commentary with this panorama. But uh, obviously a drone flying around. Look at that. What a environmental disaster. Oh, where are all the environmentalists in the United States? You know, you tell me. I, I want these leftist lunatics to come out and march on the streets about the fact that uh, um, Ukraine blew up the dam, or so it appears, uh, or engineered the destruction of the dam. Let's just put it that way. So... You know, where, where are the, where, you know, when we blew up the Nord Stream pipeline, two, two of the biggest environmental disasters, the, the, all these climate, you know, hell, I was listening to the radio just today about uh, uh, who's that lunatic that they've got in, in the Senate that's the head of the Democrat Party. Uh, damn it. 
drawing a blank on it uh um anyway he was saying today that you know uh obviously climate change is the uh cause of the fires in canada <laughs> how could how could schultz what is that his name schultz uh, I, how the hell does that guy get elected a year after year i guess the democrats are just lunatics in my opinion but look at this this is an environmental disaster of monumental proportions Ah, and you know, I, I can't watch no more. I, I won't torture you with this anymore. Um, anyway, horrible. Absolutely horrible. <laughs>